Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of our series Cyber Insight Network Knowledge Quickies. Today I want to talk about uh, some very useful tools and applications that network engineers use uh, in their day-to-day -day work. And the reason that I want to talk about these tools is because for a lot of folks who are new to IT or, or new to networking, they spend a lot of time learning about the foundational principles of computer internetworking, but not a lot of time learning about the, the tools that engineers use uh, commonly throughout the day. So I, I thought it might be interesting for, for new folks to kind of get a little bit of a perspective on the types of tool sets and applications that once they move into full-time employment in an organization, will be heavily relying on uh, in their day-to-day -day work and how some of these tools can actually improve the quality of the work and make their output uh, a lot more efficient. So there's six main applications that I want to talk about today. As you can see from the diagram on the, on the left of the video, um, we have PuTTY, Wireshark, Microsoft Visio, Notepad++, WinSCP, and Python. Now, also depicted on that diagram is the particular operating systems that they all are supported on and whether or not uh, this is a free software that anyone could download or if there is some type of fee to the uh, vendor who produces it. The first tool that I want to talk about, and the most popular one on the list, is one that I use every single day at work, and that is PuTTY. PuTTY is a open source terminal emulator which allows you to make SSH, Telnet, and console connections from your local device to a uh, remotely connected uh, network device. PuTTY runs on Windows and has support for running on Mac OS and Linux. In my day-to-day -day work, I mostly run it off of Windows machines. One of the things that I really like about PuTTY, and I know that other network engineer friends of mine equally enjoy, is the fact that it has connection profiles. And what a connection profile is, is it allows you to uh, take information about the specific device, such as IP address, or name, or perhaps the keyboard layout you want to use, or the, the logging mechanism that you want to use, such as you know logging uh, configurations or output to your desktop. It allows you to take that and save that, so it's able to be used in a very repeatable manner. Some other cool things with PuTTY is the fact that it is completely free, um, it's very lightweight, and it's portable. So you actually don't even need to really install PuTTY. You can just download the EXE onto your desktop and just start running it from there. Uh, the next tool that I want to talk about is a tool called Wireshark. Now, Wireshark allows you to do troubleshooting of uh, network communication, specifically at the packet level. So one of the, the useful things with troubleshooting when it comes to Wireshark is that as network engineers, a lot of times we will uh, troubleshoot by looking at the, the flow logs or the ACLs uh, within the network. So at the firewall level, at the router level, or at the switch level. Uh, with Wireshark, we're able to install this on the host level and get a little bit more granularity as far as whether or not a device is in fact sending or receiving the, the packets that we're expecting it to. Furthermore, you can go deeper into the packet and look at the actual the payload or the different uh, different segments of the headers, and you can really do a lot of in-depth troubleshooting uh, to figure out why something isn't working, or if you're working on the security side of the house, to look to see whether something is a malicious packet or someone is trying to hide data in, in different parts of, a, of the headers or within the payload. The next tool I want to talk about is uh, Microsoft Visio. Now, anybody who's been uh, in the IT industry for some time realizes the importance of documentation. Now, documentation is important from both a you know uh, keeping track of your IP addresses, your host names, your data flows, but one of the most important things that engineers and architects have to take into account is making sure that they're able to correctly depict uh, 
the architectural layout of the IT systems that they're responsible for. And Visio is, is the primary tool that uh, engineers use to do this, to create various types of uh, network diagrams, data flow layouts, rack elevations, pretty much anything that you would be doing that's a visual representation of something related in your IT organization, you're probably going to end up doing it with Microsoft Visio. So uh, a few of the caveats with Visio, um, as awesome as it is, um, it does only run on uh, Microsoft Windows. Um, and then also because of how awesome it is, there is a price tag that comes along with that. Uh, I think uh, last time I looked, I think it was in $300 range, maybe 250 or 350 or something like that. Um, but it is, it is a tool that you definitely want to become familiar with um, because as you progress in your career, you are definitely going to end up using it uh, more and more. The next tool I want to talk about is Python. And Python is what most would agree the preferred uh, programming language for network engineers. And there's a few reasons behind that. Um, it's very powerful compared to just using normal bash scripting or some other scripting languages. It's pretty easy to learn uh, because of the fact that it actually is a programming language. Um, it makes it so that it's a lot more maintainable and can be integrated with other uh, aspects of um, management of Python scripts and, and other uh, tool sets and things like that that are written in Python. So as you move into larger environments with more devices that you need to manage and monitor, having uh, tools that allow you to do that in an efficient manner is absolutely key. And while there are uh, COTS applications that you can use that, that make that easier, there's a cost that comes along with them. And so Python helps even the playing field a little bit by allowing engineers to script together different types of uh, tools and checks and uh, you know different types of, how should I put this, uh, automate different types of um, repeatable tasks. Maybe you're pulling information from all of the interfaces off of a whole bunch of devices, or you're trying to do a config backup across a few hundred devices, or you're trying to push out a configuration to a whole bunch of devices. Well, Python is a free way that allows network engineers to start to implement automation in their environment. So the next tool that I want to talk about is WinSCP. And WinSCP is another free open source tool that runs on Windows. And just like Putty, it's a tool that I've been using for years. Uh, my primary purpose in using WinSCP is uh, pushing a network device software packages from my uh, management workstation to whichever devices need to be uh, upgraded. It's very easy to use. In fact, it's drag and drop when it comes to moving files from my admin workstation to whichever device I need to upgrade, whether that's a, a network device or uh, moving other files onto, onto Linux devices someplace else. Um, it's pretty straightforward. There's not much to it. Um, I believe it supports SCP and SFTP. I always use uh, SCP with it. Um, it's just a great tool to have in your arsenal and makes it very, very easy to move files back and forth. The last tool that I want to talk about is Notepad++. So let, let me get this out of the way. As a network engineer, you are going to be using text editors a lot. Any time that you're going to be editing configurations, moving configurations, really doing anything, it's always copying and pasting stuff off of devices into a text editor, manipulating it, and then copying it back into that device or moving it to another device. So we all have Notepad on our, on our Windows machine or a text editor on our Mac or, you know, whatever your, your flavor of uh, text editing software is on whatever OS you use. Well, Notepad++ is uh, a little bit more unique and a little bit more robust. Um, so 
it is a free open source software. Uh, the downside is that it is only supported on Windows. But if you work in a Windows environment, you are 100% going to want to use this compared to regular Notepad. And, and there's a, a few reasons. First off, it auto saves whatever you're typing in there. So if you're working on some stuff and then you go and get up and you forget and somebody comes over and reboots your machine, it's actually going to save whatever it was that you were typing there. So that is awesome. Really, really helpful. Another thing is that it has tabs. So it allows you to maintain multiple uh, text files up in the document at the same time and you can just switch back and forth between the tabs. Um, it does have uh, powerful uh, search uh, capabilities. Um, it has a whole bunch of plugins that it works with. One other cool thing that it has is syntax highlighting. So if you're going to be writing scripts, um, and I think we can kind of see right here on this first picture that's on the, the Google search for there, how it's highlighting stuff in different colors. Um, it does that, which makes it a lot easier to, to read the and understand the layout of the scripts that you're developing. So that's kind of a, a nice feature that you're not going to find in your, your standard uh, text editors. So there we have it, six tools that network engineers use a lot. Um, so if you are new to IT, you're going down the path of becoming a network engineer, you definitely want to spend some time getting familiar with these tools, understanding how they work, and how they can uh, make your job a lot easier and improve your efficiency. As always, if you have any questions, uh, leave a comment in the video below or hit me up on Twitter at jbizzle703. All right, take care.